Linus Tech Tips is the go-to place for tech-related content. It's been this way for many years, but is all that about to change? It seems like yet another one of those situations where someone or something you thought was too big to fail decided to prove that when it comes to the internet, no one is too big to fail. The difference between us and somebody like Gamers Nexus or Hardware Unboxed is we test new components, new tests, every time. From this clip to being fact-checked by the same people that they called out, Gamers Nexus, to a ridiculous but all-time classic YouTuber apology, to some accusations of sexual harassment and more. So I'll skip the three-minute intro about who Linus is, what Linus Tech Tips does as a company, and assume that you know that this is the biggest tech YouTube channel on the planet. Up front, I like Linus Tech Tips, I like the YouTube channel, and I'm sure many of you do too. I've watched it for what seems like forever. However, his handling of this entire situation has screamed that something needs to change. Sometimes money, fame and status change people and rarely do they change back. I'm going to hope that that's not the case this time, but there are a lot of accusations, some without evidence and some that are just objectively true. So first up, Gamers Nexus started to dig into Linus Tech Tips claim that their testing is better. I'm going to assume because they already knew that Linus Tech Tips were doing things the wrong way and this was just sort of the catalyst to say fuck it and fuck you. After all, if you're doing what you perceive to be better work and then get called out by a bigger channel, that is one way to motivate an expose. What Gamers Nexus found was probably worse than expected. The boring but super relevant stuff is that Linus Media Group have been operating with poor, negligent quality control and frankly terrible ethical practices. Examples given were varying in severity but were enough to show that Linus and the team are pumping out content that hasn't been checked thoroughly for mistakes at any level of the video creation process. Even at the very base level, their testing specifically, which is obviously an incredibly important thing to get absolutely 100% right every time as millions of consumers look to these tests for guidance on spending their hard-earned money. And obviously not just for the consumers as well, Linus Tech Tips are ethically and morally bound to representing the product and the company in the exact way that the product and company should be represented in the first place. Their process is essentially causing harm to consumers and companies, and it's all due to their testing negligence and lack of quality control. Essentially, the testing was off, and that led to incorrect conclusions being made, and therefore consumers being tricked into a decision on faulty data. This wasn't or isn't a one-off. Games Nexus gave enough examples that are clear as day indicators that something in their process is severely wrong. Not only that, but they also highlighted that Linus Tech Tips would catch some errors during video editing, and instead of correcting those errors in the video before setting it live, would just post text on screen in annotations or comments in their YouTube section to clear up straight misinformation. Now this might sound innocent, but it is absolutely unacceptable as a practice. Not only do the majority of users never read the comment sections, but a great number listen audio only and don't see the corrections on the screen. That means as a content producer, it seems like Linus Tech Tips are happy to say we are the authority on this topic, but we are also okay with being straight wrong about what we're saying if the alternative is having to spend five minutes reshooting part of a video that was just factually incorrect. Why exactly this is happening should be pretty clear. Linus Tech Tips is being driven like a stolen Ferrari. The business is trying to be everything and to grow exponentially for the sake of it. They are not happy with being number one, they want to be even more. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing inherently wrong with that concept. But when you sacrifice quality, ignore valid criticism, and treat your consumers who give you that status as if they are second to those numbers, you have fucked up and maybe there's going to be a downfall shortly after. So next up, some of the examples given of why this is so egregious is that Linus Media Group posts their employee interviews publicly, which means people can access them. These interviews are incredibly consistent with what everyone can see from a public standpoint. All the employees are constantly complaining about lack of time or care in their content, that they are constantly rushed and pushed to get things done at a breakneck pace. Would be nice if the pace was lessened a little bit so we could just like relax 
maybe just like have some meetings on Fridays, have time to like debrief or look in the rear view mirror though how things went. So it's not like the management hasn't been told, seen the errors or are otherwise oblivious to these issues. They instead just choose to ignore them in order to chase the bag. Now next up, this is probably one of the stupidest and honestly insane things you could hear about a tech or any company doing. So Linus Tech Tips accepted a custom component from a company called Billet Labs. This specific component was supposed to fit on a 3090 Ti graphics card and has been designed, specced and explained to do exactly that and specifically that. Linus decided to test the component on a different graphics card entirely because it was just easier to do, I guess. Doing it the proper way would apparently have thrown the no stop schedule out of whack and prevented a video going live. So instead they just used the 4090. They then concluded, shock and horror, that the component in question didn't work very well on the graphics card, it wasn't rated or designed to run on, and then went on to berate the company for making a bad product. They literally told people no one should ever buy this. Essentially, they caused what would have been without this drama, I guess as people are calling it, irreparable damage to the company's viability for the first product they'd ever created, potentially ruining this company and their creator's future in one fell swoop. If this wasn't bad enough, Linus then doubled down on the One Show podcast talking about why they couldn't do it, because it would have just cost a little bit of money. I'm sorry, like it's a cool product, but it's a bad it, product. It looks great. Yeah, it looks super cool. Are you just saying it's saying, bad I don't think just they, purely because of the price? It's bad because it makes absolutely no sense and nobody should buy it. There are of course other problems to this, such as Linus saying specifically that even if the test was done properly and it was a better product, it wouldn't have changed anything that they said, which is silly. Now this is not only disgustingly unethical behavior, but when called out to then double down shows a distinct lack of character, which is really disappointing as someone who's been a fan of the channel for what seems like a decade. Now the reason he gave for not doing the retest, despite knowledge that the test was wildly incorrect, was again that they would need to spend, in his example, one, two, three, four, five hundred dollars to do so. I, I don't know guys, I'm not sure if I can apologize for not spending another hundred, two hundred, three hundred, $500 of various people's time sitting and engineering a workaround to a product that no matter the result, nobody should buy. Now keep in mind, this is a studio that accepted the product for free, so they paid nothing to get the product. They then made a video that got 1.5 million views with sponsorships inside, and they couldn't be bothered to spend $500 to make sure it was accurate for the company's sake who gave them the opportunity to do this video in the first place that Linus Tech Tips obviously then made a whole bunch of money from. And I will just say this channel earns tens of millions of dollars yearly in revenue, just for the record. Now if that wasn't bad enough, it gets worse. So Billet Labs asked for the prototype back, since it cost them thousands of dollars to create, and was their only one. Linus Tech Tips agreed multiple times in writing during email conversations to return it. Then, without informing anyone, Linus Tech Tips placed the component on auction for charity and sold it to a random buyer. Let me rephrase that one for you in case you missed it. Linus took a component that wasn't his, that he knew the company wanted back, that was proprietary technology given to him for a test only, and sold it to a stranger who could have been a rival company, or sell to a rival company, and literally ruin Billet Lab's entire production, aka their entire company. So not only did Linus ruin the company's image, he also could have ruined their actual business by doing this. Not only that, it's also such a confusingly stupid thing to do, because if someone sends you something, you always ask if it's yours, or if they want it back. But obviously when they do say yes we want it back, and you agree, then just turn around and sell it, I just can't understand where the process broke down, but we'll get to that in a little while. So after this, Billet Labs discovered the sale and obviously got angry about it. Again, according to Billet Labs, and Gamers Nexus say they vetted this information thoroughly, Billet Labs had no communication with Linus or Linus Tech Tips, the channel, or Linus Media Group, the company, until two hours after the Gamers Nexus expose video went live. At that point, they reached out to Billet Labs and told them that they would make it right by paying what Billet Labs claimed it cost to produce. Which obviously makes it look like Linus only reached out when they knew they'd fucked up and it had gone public. So after this, Linus made a forum post discussing the video that Gamers Nexus created. This was really really bad as you would probably expect. He said he didn't sell the component 
he auctioned it for charity due to a miscommunication, which no one cares about. The issue isn't that it was for personal gain or for charity, the issue is that you did it in the first place. In the post, Linus also claimed they already reached an agreement with Billet Labs over the component, but it was worded in such a way that it seems like they did so prior to the Gamers Nexus video, which according to Billet Labs and Gamers Nexus is false. Though by the time of writing this, it would have been true. It just seems like it was worded in a way that came off as it was done so before the video. After this, Linus goes on the offensive and essentially calls out Gamers Nexus and makes them the bad guys, questioning their journalistic practices and makes himself as well as Linus Tech Tips as the victim in all this. Essentially, Linus thinks you have not performed journalistic practices well enough if you haven't reached out for comment when the comment wouldn't have altered the reporting. This whole thing just comes across as gaslighting, to be perfectly honest. I know that's an overused word, but I don't know what else to say. It lacks the slimy corporate PR response, but replaces it with something equally as dirty. Essentially, the entire response is either lying, placating, or misdirecting. There is no taking blame for this, and essentially it just comes off as, oh, they're just trying to cause drama, and this isn't really right. Towards the end, and maybe trying to put things to bed, the message states that this won't be getting talked about in the future, and to expect no further comment as everything that needs to be said has been said. Obviously, everyone disagreed with this sentiment, because nothing of value or consequence had been said from them at all. Now if it all ended here, it would have been a particularly sad ending to the story because nothing would have changed, and clearly Linus thinks they have done absolutely nothing wrong and are in fact just the victim of some kind of hit piece. But as you'll know if you spent any time on the internet at all, when some big drama like this is happening, people start to bring forward their own grievances. So at this time, an ex-employee of Linus Media Group dropped a set of tweets, first confirming that they are in fact a mystery employee who left a scathing review of their time at Linus Media Group, and this was posted to the Glassdoor website. This review talks about sexism, harassment, inappropriate conduct, misuse of power from management, overwork, and way, way more. This post came out in July of 2022, so not a recent set of accusations from a, a year ago. And now, with a face and name to the claim, they have, of course, renewed credibility. Not just that, but Madison, the person who made this post, went into further detail about the specific instances of these issues during her time at the company. Some of these situations are absolutely reprehensible and deserving of complete condemnation if true, such as things like assault. She talks about cases of workplace abuse, such as talking about her physical appearance and cold homophobic slurs. On top of that, the place sounds like an utter nightmare to work at, with a management structure of people who shouldn't have power over others. So for the record, these claims are semi-backed up by another former employee who claims to have talked to her throughout that time and what she's saying now lines up with what she was saying back then. Though this employee also clarifies it is still hearsay as he wasn't present for the things that happened to her. This, along with the next Gamers Nexus response and the absolutely huge community backlash, forced Linus Media Group to post the classic YouTuber apology video. First though, um, I don't really know how to say this, they posted it to their paywalled content site, which is a first for me. I've never seen somebody paywall their apology video, but then again, nor have I seen somebody joke about sponsor plugs in an apology video or actually plug their store during it. I've asked the team to unflinchingly address both the concerns that have been raised and how we intend to fix them with the money we'll make from our sponsor. <laughs> Just kidding. Hold on, hold on. I'm mostly on the product side, lttstore.com. What? Somebody had to say it. Thank you for all for holding us accountable. I feel ready for the challenge and ready for this message from our sponsor. Now, I'm not gonna outright fully condemn them for this because Linus Media Group, Linus Tech Tips have always been a jokey, make fun of things place. But obviously it does come across tone deaf and you can see why people would get upset about this because it's just inappropriate. There's also like a 69 joke, which you could obviously class as a sexual joke within that video. And our goal is six nines. And you're being accused publicly of sexual harassment and potentially assault happening at the workplace. So this is not a good thing to be doing. It's just not very clever. This video wasn't quite singing about it with a ukulele, but it was pretty bottom tier for a good YouTuber apology video. 
What people are obviously going to say about the previous point with the sexual joke is that this video was filmed prior to Madison's tweets going public with those accusations. But the problem is with that theory is that the video went live after that came out. Which if you'll remember early in the video, we were talking about one of the big problems with Linus Tech Tips quality control with their content, which essentially leads to them pushing out videos instead of pulling back and making very simple changes, even if it's going to be something minor. In one way I can sympathise with wanting to get the video out as early as possible in order to stem the bleeding of what we'll get into in a moment with the immediate consequences, but at the same time, read the fucking room. Like, it, it's that simple really. One thing that did come from the video is a claim of legitimate error regarding the Billet Lab situation. The claim being made was that they did try to email them prior to the Gamers Nexus video going live, but just incompetently didn't include their Billet Lab's contact on the email correspondence. I even included Colton's attempt at apologizing and offering, no questions asked, full compensation for their stated value of the product, which happened on the 10th before we were under any pressure to do so. Which definitely removes intent, if intent was ever a question in the first place. Because I don't think anybody was going into this looking at the facts and thinking, this is for personal profit. It just doesn't align with the facts that were presented even in Gamers Nexus video. The issue was that it was allowed to happen on all of these different levels, and then of course not immediately remedied with the care that it deserved, which the revelation and justification doesn't change one little bit. Whether you did it for personal gain or for charity makes no real difference to the actual core problem. Now Linus Tech Tips have came out now and they've said they're going to stop video production on a temporary basis in order to figure things out and try to amend all of their processes and systems to eliminate all the issues that have been raised from the public backlash and the videos. They also have since stated that they're going to hire an external third party investigator to look into the allegations raised by Madison on social media. And that sort of concludes the story from beginning to end and obviously people are going to inevitably call this drama. Realistically, despite being a catch-all term, this thing is a lot more serious than just a few YouTubers beefing over some random things like usual. The way in which Linus Tech Tips has been operating is unacceptable for their position in the community and the overall tech ecosystem. Linus started out as a guy who likes tech and then made videos about it. I personally always viewed the videos, even in recent years, as being silly, fun, but also trying to be factual. Linus Tech Tips now, however, have clearly tried to mesh the fun with the hardest hitting tech analysis and done a very poor job with some of the fact collecting. You obviously don't have to choose between having a good time, having a personality and having good reporting of facts as they are not mutually exclusive, but clearly Linus Media Group have failed in this regard. Realistically, most of the videos are still good, they're still fun, you still like the people involved, but obviously if you're going to be making claims about numbers, the numbers have to be right, and if you're going to be making claims that are incorrect, you've got to process that on the actual video and show people, as opposed to just putting it as a side note. When it comes to numbers, things have got to be done with unquestionable diligence and ethics, especially when it's going to impact millions of people and dozens of companies that are losing and gaining money based on what you're doing. It's a net negative and it benefits absolutely nobody unless you are just trying to push out content as quick as possible, which just puts more money in Linus Media Group's pockets and doesn't help anyone. And obviously isn't making the fine details that matter within this content any better despite the money growing. So the idea that you can refuse to retest components because of a potential small financial loss demonstrates that even on a common sense, easy to solve level, Linus is incapable of doing this at the moment. It's all good accepting fault and saying we were wrong and we're going to do things better, but you had the opportunity to do so and you denied it in the first instance and it required more things to come out for this to even be a consideration. So the company culture stems from Linus and he's the one that needs to change very soon or he could just forge a new path that doesn't claim to be the best tech reviews, leaning more into the fun style that they were most known for and that would also be fine. Not everybody has to do everything the same way, but then you can't claim to be doing the best at something that you're clearly not doing even properly. As it stands right now, Linus Tech Tips have lost production time and easily tens of thousands of dollars from their exclusive paywalled video site subscriptions where people are cancelling them day by day, thousands of users at a time. They've lost hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube and they stand to lose millions of dollars in sponsorships and video release delays 
but really they can count themselves lucky if this is all that they lose in the short term as it's clear from the community response that they expect real tangible and visible change before dropping this subject there's a big potential here that Linus Tech Tips numbers never go back up and the entire community may have lost faith in them completely even if they do show to be doing things better. Realistically, nobody deserves to be condemned forever and not be allowed to change. People should be allowed second chances, especially when it comes down to putting out false numbers and things like that. I think if they do better, then obviously that's okay. But when it comes to the workplace harassment and things like that, if that comes out as being true, obviously that's an entire different discussion. So while it's still entirely possible Linus Tech Tips recovers from this, it's also possible that they never do, which would mean instead of chasing that exponential growth which led them to this point, that they'd spend the next years trying to recover what they had before fucking it all up. Time will tell of course, and we'll wait and see. But for now, that's the whole, or at least most, of the Linus Tech Tips situation.